Hi, welcome to Teen Pride Book Talks. My name is Lucy, and this is the program on AADL TV, where each episode I take a few minutes to talk about a young adult book that is both representative of and inclusive of folks in the LGBTQIA community. The book that I am going to be talking about today is called Wren Martin Ruins It All, and this is by Amanda DeWitt. This is the story of Ren Martin. He is a high school senior at a school called Rapture High in a coastal town in the Florida Panhandle in a town called Rapture. He is on the student council and right at the beginning of the book, he becomes president of the student council. It's kind of by this default Two other members of the student council had to drop out because of some cheating scandals. And so he moved up from secretary to president, which he's excited about because he has some big ideas about how he's going to fix Rapture High. But he's also not excited because that means his vice president is someone named Leo Reyes. And Leo Reyes is Ren's arch enemy. He has decided. In fact, on page two of this book, Ren Martin provides us with a list of reasons why I hate Leo Reyes, starting with he's very tall, and then Leo dropped a book on his head earlier in high school, and he thinks it was intentional. He was reaching for something from a locker, and it dropped down on Run Below. But it's a pretty long list, so he has this nemesis that he's sort of going to have to pair up with and run the student council. So the first order of business that Ren would like to take care of is to abolish the school's annual Valentine's Day dance. This is the biggest tradition at Rapture High. Bigger than prom, bigger than homecoming, bigger than anything is their Valentine's Day dance. It is a drain on the school's resources. It's a social nightmare as Valentine's Day could be. You can imagine all the drama around that, the potential for people getting hurt, and it's not generally very inclusive. Ren is asexual, and Valentine's Day for him is a social nightmare. He doesn't know how to navigate that at all. He doesn't actually even think he can be in a relationship. He's interested in being in a relationship. He feels like that's a big ask. Like he would have to provide the information up front about being asexual and that nobody would want to be in a relationship with him. So he doesn't even feel like it's worth pursuing. So Ren's idea, no Valentine's Day dance, perfect solution. And of course, the rest of the student council says, no, we can't do that. The teacher liaison for the student council says we can think about changing it, but we can't get rid of it. So Leo Reyes comes up with an idea for how they can get the money to put on this Valentine's Day dance, which is that they need sponsorship. And Leo recommends an app called the Buddy app. So Buddy is an app that anonymously connects people in local circles. So everyone like from your school would be joined or in your town, optimally for friendship. That's what it's billed for. That's why it's called Buddy. But of course, because it is this app where people meet each other, it automatically is used as a matchmaking app. Naturally, Ren hates this because he doesn't see how he could use it realistically to make friends and he's not looking for a sexual partner. Instead of a danceless year that Ren was hoping for, they are going to have this huge dance because they get in touch with Buddy and Buddy has agreed to sponsor it if the dance uses Buddy in a certain way so that at the dance, everyone's signed up on Buddy and their chosen Buddy is revealed to them. It's all just sort of wrapped into each other and it's going to be the biggest Valentine's dance that Rapture High has ever put on or ever seen because of Leo's suggestion. Ren secretly signs up for this app because he's curious and he also feels like, I'm the student council president, I should know what's going on. And he's convinced that obviously it's not gonna match him with a reasonable online friend. Ren doesn't believe this is possible, but he does start to connect with someone who he names Buddy Boy, and he recognizes right away that this is a really silly name. And he finds in talking to Buddy Boy, he can, sort of be more vulnerable because he doesn't know who it is and they've agreed that they're not ever going to meet up. Buddy Boy likes Ren's banter. He likes the way that Ren is sarcastic and kind of snarky but funny and actually genuinely caring. And this surprises Ren that someone would like these things about him. He he's, isn't used to thinking about somebody wanting to connect 
with him in any way at all because he's not interested in connecting sexually. And he becomes really, really invested in this app because he becomes really, really invested in this relationship with Buddy Boy. So as the school year progresses, Ren thinks maybe he's kind of falling for Buddy Boy, but he also starts to get to know Leo a lot better because they have to work closely on this Valentine's Day dance. And he starts to learn things about Leo. He assumed that Leo Reyes had this perfect life and this perfect family. And he starts to learn some of the ways in which Leo struggles and some of the things about Leo that are not that different from himself. And they start to connect. And so then he wonders, maybe is he falling for Leo? He wants to start living his life again. He has been in a stagnant point We find out sort of at the beginning of the book that Ren's mother died about two years ago and he sort of hasn't moved on. He hasn't allowed himself to feel really anything since then. We don't find out how she died. We don't find out a story around that till much later. But he all of a sudden feels like maybe he does want to start living his life again but he doesn't want to risk rejection. The Valentine's Day dance is coming. Will he ask someone? We don't know. He is so worried. He's so angsty. And this book is narrated from first person point of view from Ren. He's got this great endearing voice. It's very scattered and kind of chaotic. Uh, He's very quippy. He's very funny in a sarcastic, snarky way. He gives us a really good picture of how complex it can be for anybody to fall in love, but for somebody to fall in love while asexual, what that can look like. Ren's struggles are portrayed in a very realistic way. The author, Amanda DeWitt, does a good job portraying them with empathy. And when we learn about Leo's struggles, that's applied there as well. The way that they help each other work through some of the difficulties that they are facing and the way that they learn to be vulnerable together. It's sort of this give and take and it's like a little bit one step forward, two steps back, but ultimately it's a very healthy teenage friendship and it's a really accurate portrayal, I think, of how such a friendship is built. I said Ren is an endearing character and he is, but he is flawed and his stubbornness can be frustrating, but this is paired against his quirkiness and his empathy and his honesty. And it just makes him a really likable character and a great voice. Obviously, social media plays a big part in this book. The book revolves around how Buddy is going to be used. And so there's a pretty good exploration there of the benefits, but also the downsides of social media and the enormity of social media in a high school environment. The other members of the student council are also great characters. Ren's very best friend is a girl named Ryan, and she comes from a totally different family than Ren's. They have a really interesting friendship. They're very close. They've known each other their whole lives. And so on holidays and things like that, Ren and his dad are sort of folded into Ryan's family. And then there are these twins, Archer and Maggie. Archer is very into soccer and Maggie is somewhat unfriendly seeming, very uh, social oriented person who enjoys throwing big parties. But because they have to work closely together, they all end up having to support each other in certain ways. We have Ren's coming of age. This is a coming of age story, but it also is a story about how someone in finding themselves can also become surrounded by a really supportive and close group of people and how in turn they can be supportive as well to those friends and to those family members. I really enjoyed reading this book. It has a lot of humor in it because of the way that Ren thinks, but it also gets into some deeper issues. Certainly it talks a lot about grief. It talks about sexuality. It talks about relationships in a very honest way. I think you would enjoy hearing from Ren Martin. So I recommend that you read Red Martin Ruins It All by Amanda DeWitt. Thank you for joining me.